What's going on everyone? This is Kevin here, coming at you with my hands-on and first impressions video of the Samsung Galaxy A23 5G. So without further ado, let's get started. Now this device recently launched in the US and it is being offered both factory unlocked and at a variety of different carriers. This phone is especially being promoted very heavily at the prepaid carriers. And I know that at Metro by T-Mobile, for example, you can get this phone for free if you switch in from another carrier. So essentially, there are a lot of deals going around for this device, and I can't imagine that too many people will be paying full price for the phone itself. Now prior to this phone launching, there was the regular Galaxy A23, which launched in the spring, but that phone is limited to just 4G LTE, and it was never offered in the US. So I was really curious when we would actually get the Galaxy A23 5G, and here it is right now. Now this device does share a lot of things with that device, but that being said though, there is more of a difference with this phone than just the fact that it does have 5G connectivity. It also has a better display and a faster processor as well. Now before I show you a variety of different things about the Galaxy A23 5G, let's take a closer look and see what all comes included here in the box. So here is the box for the device. As you can see, it is a very slim box. There's a picture of the phone up front, and then included inside is a double-sided USB-C cable. We also have a quick start guide, and we have the SIM card removal tool. Now with the Galaxy A23 5G, we have a very large 6.6-inch display. Now this display does feature Corning Gorilla Glass 5, so that does make it extra durable, which is very impressive for a budget device like this one. Now the display is PLS LCD, but it is 120 hertz. So I was not expecting such a fast refresh rate for a lower end phone like this one. So this is a very nice surprise, but you can definitely tell it is 120 hertz as things do seem very smooth here, definitely very premium. The display itself is 1080p. We have a PPI 400, a 20 by nine aspect ratio. So a more narrow but taller form factor. And we have an 82.5% screen to body ratio. So we do have a water drop notch up top here and a little bit of a thicker bottom bezel. But overall, this device is a very large display panel, really making it ideal for content consumption. Now the front facing camera on this device is eight megapixels and stay tuned for my full review video here on the channel coming up shortly, as I'll be showing you a variety of different photo and video samples from all the various cameras on this phone. Now internally with this device, we're getting 64 gigabytes of storage along with micro SD card expansion. There is no wireless charging with this device but we do have a fingerprint sensor mounted on the power button. So let's give that a try right now. Very fast and responsive. One more time. It's so very fast. And in addition to having a fingerprint sensor, this phone also supports face unlock. So I appreciate that we have multiple methods here for accessing the phone. Now taking a look at the cameras on the back of the device, we have a quad camera setup. So there's a 50 megapixel main camera, a five megapixel ultra wide angle camera that can capture images at up to 123 degrees, a two megapixel macro camera for close up images, and a two megapixel depth sensing camera to assist with portrait mode. And we do have portrait mode for both the rear and front cameras on this device. Now here's how things look with the main camera on the phone. Then from here, we can switch over to the ultra wide angle camera. So we're able to fit a lot more content into the frame. Then from here, we can switch over to portrait mode we can also do the same thing with the front facing camera. So there's me. And then we can also take standard selfies as well. And if you want to, there's a group selfie option, which does crop things out a little bit. Then switching back to the rear cameras again, we can go over to the more tab where we can then access the macro camera to then take those really close up pictures. So I do appreciate that even though this is a lower end device from Samsung, we're still getting a lot of different camera features so that if you find yourself using a lot of them, that might give you a further justification to spend more on a more higher end Samsung device in the future. Now with this phone, we're getting four gigabytes of RAM paired up with the Qualcomm Snapdragon 695 5G processor. So that processor is decently powerful. I have used it with other devices in the past, but of course with that processor, we do get 5G connectivity. Now at this point in 2022, you can certainly get by without 5G, but at the same time, if you're gonna go through all the effort of getting a brand new smartphone, you might as well get one that does actually use your carrier's latest and greatest network so that your device doesn't become obsolete. Now I'm definitely gonna have to use the device quite a bit more to get a good idea of the performance that we're getting here, but I did run a benchmark test with Geekbench 5, and I'll show you the scores in that test right now. But essentially, 
I got a single core score of 681 and a multi core score of 1999. So, what I recommend doing is running this test on your current phone and then compare your scores to these scores to get a better idea of whether or not the Galaxy A23 5G is indeed going to be a performance upgrade for you. Because it certainly is possible that the phone that you currently have could be slower than this device. But again, from my experience with this being a lower end phone, I am pretty happy with the performance we're getting. Now unfortunately, video recording with this device does max out at just 1080p with both the rear and front facing cameras. I definitely would have preferred 4K video recording, but I suppose you're going to have to spend a little bit more money on a more premium A-series phone such as the A53 5G to get that feature. Now the battery capacity here is 5,000 milliamp hours, so that's really good. Definitely expect to get at least a full day of usage out of this device, if not two. And Samsung overall has been really good at optimizing their phones to get the most battery efficiency possible. Now with this device, we are getting Android 12 out of the box, along with Samsung's One UI skin. So this is One UI 4.1, and if you've used any Samsung device within the last couple of years, overall the experience will definitely be pretty familiar to you as they don't change too many things from each version of One UI, but at the same time, they do incorporate the best features of the latest version of Android that it's on top of. So for example, with this being Android 12, you are still gonna get all the various Android 12 features, but in addition to that, you're getting extra features from Samsung. Now this device does feature NFC, which is really awesome. So if you do like to make mobile contactless payments using a service like Samsung Pay, for example, then you can do that here with this phone. But now that we've covered a variety of the different specifications and features of the Samsung Galaxy A23 5G, let's now take a closer look at the hardware. Now I already talked quite a bit about the front panel here, but again, we're getting a very large display and it does look very nice. Taking a look at the left side of the phone, we just have the slot for the micro SD card and SIM card. Then on the right side of the phone, we have volume up, volume down, and also the power button, which doubles as the fingerprint sensor. Then up top here, we have the noise canceling microphone, and then on the bottom of the device, we have the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, microphone, USB-C port for charging and data transfer, and the speaker. And then on the back of the phone, we have this matte finish, and then we have the camera module with the flash, and that's pretty much it. So overall, it is a pretty simplistic device. It is also made completely of plastic, besides the display of course, which is made of glass. That being said though, the phone doesn't necessarily feel cheap, but I do recommend definitely pairing this up with some sort of case just to keep the plastic from getting scratched, as having a phone made out of plastic tends to be a bit less durable than glass or metal. But this concludes my hands-on and first impressions video of the Samsung Galaxy A23 5G. Most importantly though, I'm curious to know what you think about this device. Do you think this is a good lower end option from Samsung? Definitely let me know in the comment section below. And also let me know what other content you want to see about this phone here in the channel. But this is Kevin here, and I will see you in the next video.